Hey everyone, geophysicist Stefan Burns here. There has just been a big seismic swarm at Campi Flagre, Italy's supervolcano. There were 100 plus events. This is the supervolcano located near Naples, specifically Pozzuoli is the town that is right above Campi Flagre. You have the Gulf of Pozzuoli there. And the strongest earthquake was a magnitude four earthquake as we can see. So this is all occurring effectively on September 1st. And so it has cooled off pretty quickly, but there was that magnitude four, three magnitude 3.3s, and then a whole bunch of magnitude twos and ones, as you can see, all located in this Sulfatara zone there. So this is quite striking. Let's look at their depth distribution. And if you look at the depths for these earthquakes, going from the 31st of August up to the end of September 2nd, we see that they form a perfect channel there. Look at this, going from depth at a maximum depth of three kilometers all the way up to the surface, and we see that there is a pretty even distribution here. So there is clearly a movement of energy across this entire zone not just isolated to just this upper portion or the lower portion, the entire area mobilized. Very likely related to the movement of hydrothermal fluids, but we really don't know. We know that the magma chamber at Campi Flagre is quite shallow, and so there could have been magma moving at depth. We see this magnitude four was deeper, so that's more likely to be related to the movement of magma and then these smaller quakes more likely related to the movement of hydrothermal fluids along existing fault planes. And of course, the generation of some new fractures would result. But if you go back, how does this seismic burst compare to the one that we had in February? And are we seeing an overall increase in seismicity going back not just months, but years? And here we can clearly see that seismic burst that occurred around the 1st of September thanks to this graphic by Volcano Discovery. And so our y-axis is depth and then our x-axis is our date going from the 27th of August to the 4th of September. You see this magnitude 4 earthquake right there, the three other magnitude 3.3s and then everything else. And you'll see that it definitely was an increase in seismic activity as compared to before, though there was a bit of a lead up. There is that magnitude three right there. But keep in mind that this magnitude four earthquake by itself released more energy than all the other earthquakes in that swarm combined. And then you combine the two of them together and that is quite notable. But how does it stack up to that seismic swarm that occurred back in February of this year? And well, here we have our one year plot. So here we see that seismic burst that occurred in February. If you remember, we saw some very strange pre-earthquake electromagnetic signals as observed in Cumiana, Italy, fairly close by in the days immediately preceding this seismic burst, this being one of the strongest releases of seismic energy at Campi Flagre for decades. Now, there were some stronger earthquakes that occurred slightly afterwards, a magnitude 4.6 being the highest, but you notice that earthquake activity there before the seismic burst in February was, in, you know, it was there, but it wasn't super notable as compared to what shifted afterwards. You notice this clear increase in seismicity and definitely with higher magnitude earthquakes. You don't have any magnitude 4 earthquakes before that burst. Now we're getting them fairly regularly at Campi Flagre. It's almost like Campi Flagre is waking up and it's about to give us maybe a big eruption. We haven't had a big eruption at Campi Flagre in over 500 years. So you could definitely argue that it is due to do something soon because it has a long history of notable eruptions going back thousands and even tens of thousands of years. So where do we stand now in 2025? And here we see a plot showing the total energy released seismically at Campi Flagre for 2025. Currently that stands at 377 megawatt hours. That is quite a lot, considering it's a whole bunch of magnitude ones and twos and threes and some magnitude four earthquakes. To really get up there in the gigawatt hour range, you need to have a significant high magnitude earthquake. And magnitude four earthquakes are quite big for a volcanic system like this. But here we see the number of quakes per every two days there, and this is our most recent seismic burst, so definitely bigger than all the other ones that we've had since February, 
but look at how many earthquakes we had in February. There were more than a thousand quakes in that short time span. So this burst definitely is notable, but compared to what occurred in February, that is definitely overshadowing it. But you notice that the total seismic energy release is actually fairly close. So this is right about 25 or so megawatt hours. This is probably closer to about 30, 35. So a lot of earthquakes, but it didn't have those strong magnitude fours. Now we've been getting those magnitude fours. So these bursts here didn't have as many earthquakes, but notice they spiked up higher on the total seismic energy release. And in general for 2025, look at how many high magnitude spikes we have had thus far. Now let us look at our longer term record of seismic activity. Here we have our earthquake statistics going back to 1980. You will see this bump that occurred in earthquakes at Campy Flagray in 1984. That was quite notable. And then things effectively stayed cool and calm until we started to get an increase in the early 2000s and that really ramped up in 2020. Now look at where we are in 2025. The year is not over yet, yet we are already seeing all our highest magnitude earthquakes have higher values than all the years preceding in this time frame. So we have had now 31 magnitude 3 plus earthquakes in 2025, 5 magnitude 4 plus earthquakes, and an astounding 141 magnitude 2 plus earthquakes. In 2024, those values were 121 for the magnitude 2 pluses, 27 for the magnitude 3 pluses, and 2 for the magnitude 4 pluses. And then you go back to 2023, 0 magnitude 4 plus earthquakes. You'll notice that just through this record, those are quite rare. We did have one there in 2017, but most of these years are completely flat with the magnitude 4. So we've had now 5 in 2025, and based off of that recurrence interval, we're likely going to get probably a couple more, maybe even more than that, before the year closes out. So we're seeing increased seismicity at Campy Flagray. We're seeing increased uplift at Campy Flagray, increased gas emissions, increased gas temperatures. And so it really looks like this is building up to do something, whether this is just gonna be kind of like a steam blast eruption or something big, that is an unknown, but all measures are going up and it is getting quite concerning. That is it for this video. I will keep you up to date with what is happening at Camp People Gray and also what's happening across the world geologically. That is my promise to you. We examine earthquakes, volcanoes, geophysical energies like the Schumann resonances here, and we don't stop there. We also consider what's happening with the sun, solar activity, space weather, planetary resonances, cosmic forces, and more. If you like the sound of that, then please subscribe to the channel. We are on the road to 500K, so please smash that like button, help the channel grow, join in before we blast past 500K and onwards beyond that. Thank you all so much for watching, wishing each and every single one of you well. Please take care of yourselves. No matter where you live on this globe, natural disasters can happen at any time. You need 72 hours of water, food, and a hand crank radio with some other basic supplies on hand like a water filter. Please make sure you get that in your house and you have it ready to go. That is my advice to you. Thank you all so much and I'll see you all in the next video.